this course will be about front-end bundler of a new generation called Vit, and because of that it provides much faster developer experience compared to traditional front-end bundlers such as Webpack. So in this course we're going to review most of the Vit features, and we'll be doing it step by step to better understand how Vit works, which will allow us to use this tool more efficiently. So let's get started and install Vit locally. For this I'm gonna use package manager called npm. So let's copy this command and run it in a terminal. This will prompt us to enter project name. Then we are presented with option to choose which framework we'd like to use. We're not going to use any specific framework, but instead we'll review with features by using vanilla JavaScript. Then it will ask us if we'd like to use TypeScript. We will definitely have a lesson about how to use TypeScript in Vite projects, but most part of the course will be using vanilla JavaScript. And in the end we'll see three commands that we need to run sequentially in order to run Vite server. Firstly, let's go inside of project folder. In here, let's run npm install to install all npm dependencies. And finally, we can start Vite server by running npm run dev. Here we will see which address we can use to access our project in the browser. So let's open up a new tab. And here we see welcome screen of the default vid project. Then let's open up project inside of editor. I'm going to use VS Code. And just to make it easier for us to learn how vid works, we're going to install a helpful vid plugin called vid plugin inspect, which will allow us to see how vid transforms our source files. So we will get access to such dashboard in the browser and all transformations that Wit will make with our source files will be visible to us at every step of transformations. This plugin can be installed by running the following npm command in the terminal. So let's run it and wait until installation is finished. And just to let Wit know about this plugin, we need to add the following instructions inside of Wit configuration file. Firstly, we have to create this file in the project root, unless it is already created. And paste in here all those instructions that we just copied. And then we are given with address, which we can open up in the browser, where our installed inspector will be available. But for now it is not accessible yet. We need to restart our Vite server. Let's go back to terminal, stop development server by pressing Ctrl-C, then run it again with the command npm run dev. And besides with server's address, we also see another address where our inspector will be available. And we'll see this screen that means our inspector has been successfully installed. What it is and how to use it, we will be talking about in the next lessons. And for now let's see which file gets loaded in the browser when we access root of our vid server. And the file which is loaded is called index.html, which is in the project root. Here we can see that this page also includes main JavaScript file, which by the way is included as native ECMAScript module, because here we can see attribute type with value module, and all our application gets mounted into this div with an ID of app. So now let's open up main JavaScript file and see what is happening inside. And right away we can see unusual imports of CSS file and SVG files, which are not supported natively in browsers. So if we would be using normal static server, those imports would fail. But Vit treats those imports in a special way. And before serving those imports to the browser, it applies all necessary transformations to make browsers to recognize such imports. We're going to talk about it in details in upcoming lessons. But basically, whenever we import CSS files like this, Vit is going to inject all these styles onto the page. And whenever we import assets such as SVG images, Vit is going to export pass to this file and save it in JavaScript logo variable. So then this pass can be used in a normal way, for example, inside of source attribute, as we can see right here, to reference corresponding image. And sure enough, this image will be visible on the page. It is this JavaScript logo. The same thing happens when we import vit.svg file, but there is one important difference. You may notice that vit.svg file is not in our project root. It is actually inside of a special folder with the name public. And for it, this public folder stores all static assets. And all static assets that are stored in this public folder 
will not be processed by Vite, but instead will be returned to the browser in its original form. We're also going to talk about this folder in detail in upcoming lessons. And finally, the last import we can see right here is normal import of ECMAScript module. It is this counter.js file, which provides functionality for the counter whenever we click on that button on the page. And we see that the counter increases with every click. But we are going to start our explanation of it from the very beginning. So let's clear everything inside of main.js file. Let's also remove counter.js module, which we will no longer use. And finally, we'll remove all default styles inside of style.css. And now we're done with installation and initial setup. From the next lesson, we're gonna start reviewing Vite's features step by step.